Well, welcome to another day, another episode of Traveling with Jinx. Gonna check some beaver traps. Uh, usually after the second check or whatever, usually the trap line kind of gets thin. So I should have some catches in this episode for you. We're gonna check all the beaver traps that we had originally set on this creek. It's a little different format. So hope you guys like it. If not, let me know. I can just show you the catches you know as i do these these jobs it's up to you guys but anyways here we go let's go do some trapping well it's it's cold again <laughs> we got a like a little bit of snow just a little layer you can see it this trap here is super surprising there's a con bear in the channel if you watched the first episode that was the first trap we we set and uh Usually when you you see those empty, you know, there's nothing going up and down the, the channel here uh, Here we are we're at the dam now It's really a pretty morning with that Sun coming up you can see where This The water's coming over the top the natural Creek should be like here and then this is just a, a little branch off of the pond and all this water shouldn't be here so this over here is all flooding right in through this bottom ground all that's flooded um so when we get done ready to leave i'll drop the water in some of this and that'll help drain that out for him but you can see how destructive they can be you know you couldn't you couldn't drive a tractor down in here and cut that brush You know little things like that people sometimes don't see it this part right here on the other side You know, that's all that's all water right in there Well, it looks like my trap is gone here If you watch the last episode Oh, I had a lot of wrangling to do <laughs> That was definitely pretty wild. They worked over my mound here. And uh, we're gonna see. It looks like the trap's gone, of course. And maybe we got a floater on the end. Caught three here so far. So, we should be getting closer to being done. There we go, guys. Got another beaver. Not a bad beaver. It's a little, about, I always call these kind of a dink. Any beaver here is a good beaver. And he didn't pull my chain that time. Got him on a back foot catch. So, that would make four. I've got to be getting closer to being done. I said two to four. And, uh, there we go. Not bad. So, if you guys ever wonder, the stake, I get it down to about right here in the ground. And then they wrap themselves around that T-bar. But the T-bar's got to be anchored pretty solid. So I just, this is one of my coyote traps actually. I started using a, a Bridger number three dogless because uh, I ran out of all my beaver traps and they're really doing pretty good for me. I just uh, hooked it onto that drowner there and away we go. Pretty good trap. I'm gonna get this reset. And we're gonna move on down the line. That was another back foot catch. So, I'm probably getting them where they're up here working this bank. I'm gonna assume and stepping down on it. That's, I don't know. Just try not to overthink. 
that's pretty good so far all of our catches have come off of uh off of these uh caster mount sets which i usually catch a lot of my beaver in the conibears. bears so i'm definitely a a believer in these mound sets sure has saved me a lot of time but I like to I like to close all the doors I don't like to give them any opportunities to move on or move downstream or I don't like missing all right there's our beaver and let's uh, keep moving checking traps all right well the crossover piece got a cotton bear down there and it's still set which is unusual I usually catch right there and I've got another another set right here by this log and something's on the end of it too guys he says what I think I don't see my trap actually it's right here set off I gotta get down there and reset it I have this one set on a hair trigger. And she just set off. And that there's the lodge. Pretty wild. This all this water shouldn't be here. I guess in time they would just keep it keep building it. And, all this would be flooded. Pretty wild. We got one more over here to check real quick, and then we'll check the rest of the beaver caster mounds. Hang with me. Pretty, pretty morning with the, set, the snow. Got a baked in there. All right, I just find the spring eye with my hand and she's good to go. Let's keep going. So I was talking about setting one right here. I've got to be getting real close to being done. We're going to do this backwards today, guys. <laughs> And I have to watch where I step because there's a channel through here that will get by. And I have to be careful because my camera's not waterproof. <laughs> it's always something, isn't there, guys? The other day I was talking about there's this really neat channel here. It's right here. And it drops off big time right here and there's a hole there and originally I thought I'd set a trap right here as they're kind of coming and going underneath there but I bet they're popping the ice right there try not to fall in it well I got all the way over there and I dawned on me I can't cross it <laughs> so oh Lessons we learn, right guys? Hang in there with me. I'll have some more catches on here. I'm just trying this new format. I lost my last trap. So I just want to make sure some of you guys want to check each and every one of the traps we originally set. And I thought we'd try it like this for a little while. Hope you liked the video. Let me know what you guys think. Traps set off. Caster mount set. There's some coon tracks on top. Well, I'm not really for sure exactly what's going on here. There is a beaver track right here. Great big back foot. There's a bunch of raccoon tracks right in through here. Fairly fresh. I'll just reset that. Rebait it. Or relure it. And keep moving down the line. Well, guys. It's been fun so far. We still have about... Three more traps to check. 
Hey, follow me on Facebook and Instagram. I post pretty regular if you guys don't don't know that. But uh, I'll try to keep kicking out more videos. I've got a bunch of stuff planned for you guys. So you definitely want that bell notification on. And uh, hopefully we'll have another catch here soon. All right, so we're on our pond. And I've got three traps left and I'm on the crossover. And uh, really a good looking set. And there's some fur down there on the bottom. So let's go check it out. It looks like another beaver, guys. I usually like to be on the crossover if I can. Yeah, there we go, guys. Got another nice, nice smaller beaver again. That would make three smaller beavers. And, uh, yeah, that makes the count to five. All right. There we go, guys. About the same size as the last one I just caught. I'm going to get him caught out. This, this spot right here, if you have ponds, guys, th these crossover trails are the best. They have to go from one system to the next, and they slide down these, and they go up and down them. Uh, you can't beat these spots. So if you're new, and I get a lot of messages on my channel, if you're new, make sure you set the crossovers where it hits the water. Those are no-brainer sets, I call them. They're primary sets. You got to have those set. So even if you're not seeing a lot of sign and you're going to trap there anyways, always set the crossovers. They're a no-brainer. And now, when I get done, when I get, when I start this, I kind of slick, I slick that up, and it just kind of makes it even more appealing. It's just a no-brainer. So I'm gonna get him out of there and get that reset. Want to keep moving down the line? There he is. <laughs> Not bad. I caught him in a Belisle 330. Really stout trap. I like them <laughs> and they got the curls on the top of these that make it pretty handy you don't have to fight them so much and uh, I like them now I've caught um I've caught beaver in 220s before on these sets believe it or not it's hard to imagine how a 40 or 50 pound beaver thinks they can squeeze their head through a, a little bitty 220 opening but when I think it, it's they do this, they go up and down this trail so much that they just I don't know, it's just a creature of habit, I guess. Really stout trap, they're Canadian made. If you guys don't have them, and you might not like them either, that's fine. Trap is a trap, is what I always say. It's like Ford and Chevy. But I like their safeties on the side. They're so nice. They don't like, there's no question whether or not they're gonna come and go. Got a little doctoring to do here. Bear with me, guys. I'll get this reset. And I gotta get down to the spring ice, so I gotta push it down a little bit. That's what my state says. Gotta get down to the spring ice. I'm pretty surprised so far. We're still catching. Usually at some point I stop catching. <laughs> we'll get them all right, guys. It's only a matter of time. Now, this is kind of the important part. I hope you guys can see that in the camera. I always just kind of box in the side a little bit. I make it kind of look natural as much as possible. And I had this like little log kind of thing here so that they don't come off that trail, if that makes any sense. I want them to go underneath it, not over it. And uh, hopefully there's not too much space between here and there. I had probably a stick. Try to make it look as natural as 
is it can be these sticks. By now, when you start catching, you really got to start hiding your conibears. Because after they get to seeing their buddies in a trap, they get real smart. And uh, so by now, after I start catching, whatever's left gets pretty smart. And that's why I, when I do beaver trapping, I like to go in and I catch them as quick as I can. So that they don't start getting educated. Um, they, they're pretty smart once they start seeing their buddies in the trap. I could doctor this up too much, <laughs> which I'm trying not to do. But the more I break the outline of that trap out, the better off I'm going to be. There we go. There's my set. I'll show you it on the top side. I always like to throw a little, a little fresh stuff on that trail. Slick her back. And I tell you what, guys. There's no better set than this one right here. So, you got a good trail that goes over on a crossover. And it hits water. You gotta have a trap on that sucker. Alright, it's a no-brainer set. I'm gonna get my safety off. There we go. Okay, guys. I'm on the end of the line here. Remember they were repairing that and I really probably need one more in this channel here, but uh, We went with this channel with a 280 and uh, These are secondary sets so you can see the grass as it kind of comes through there And I don't see where they're going around the trap So I got it pretty well boxed in and I can see the top of the the jaws so we're thinning them out guys <laughs> i love it let's go keep trekking some more traps i'm coming back here coyote trapping i love this location right here just love it it's a good spot on the map it looks good it feeds into some more good stuff and i guarantee you there's some coyotes coming through here might even do some bait and lure testing right here too I got all kinds of stuff I can do guys. I've got some uh, some new coyote stuff I need to test. And I've got the Chernobyl raccoon egg Alan Moore sent me the other day. And uh, there's really a lot I can do. And I got all kinds of different ideas. And I like to look at these trails and uh, seeing a good, that's a brand new canine trap right th track right there. So my intuition's correct, and uh, that's the sort of stuff that gets me excited. Um, something to look forward to next year, right? You build from one season to the next. Okay, so we've got uh, a 280 here, and she's set off. So could be the current, but it's right here. Um, don't know what's going on with that. Hopefully nothing went over the top of it. Doesn't look like it because my, my stick is still there. Uh, sometimes my traps misfire. You never know, right? Let's get that reset and uh, keep moving. Okay, so you're probably wondering what this device is I'm carrying. I made these little levers here. Loops for my legs. And I have an old dog lead that I use. Now... When I do a lot of bridge work and, and the bridges are real tall on the banks, when I do a lot of my road trapping, these come in handy. I hook them up to their legs. I can either drag them or I hoist them with this, this dog lead. I have a great big rope. It saves a lot on my back. All right, folks, had ourselves a good time trapping this creek here. We're thinning them down and it's so much fun. Hey, uh, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe. Otherwise, click the big thumbs up. Helps me out a lot. I'm Jinx, and have a great day.